Hello, good morning, and welcome to another printmaking session at the Virtual Village Hall with me, Rachel from I Printed That. I hope you're really well today and looking forward to today's workshop, which is all about intaglio prints. So intaglio, the word is spelt I-N-T-A-G-L-I-O. It's a silent G, so we pronounce it intaglio. And it is the collective noun for a group of five printmaking processes that are all different, but also use similar um, parts to the process. Some of them you've probably heard before. So there's etching, engraving, dry point, aqua tint, and mezzotint. So as I said, all different, but use similar processes. Uh, the same thing that they all use is you take a printing plate, which normally is metal, and then that is um, engraved into, or marks are made into that plate, and the recesses are all then filled with ink, and that's how the print is made. So it's the total difference, uh, total opposite to a relief printmaking process. It's the recesses that take the ink, Damp paper is then applied to the plate, put through a press, and then the, the uh, water draws out all the ink, and that's how your print's made. Sound complicated? Well, as you know, I like to demystify these printmaking processes that at first seem a little bit far away from ever being able to do at home. And I like to show you how to use some really basic equipment so you can do it from your own dining room table. And today I'm gonna show you how with the inside of a Tetra pack. And we're not gonna be using a printing press, we're going to be using a metal spoon. So I've got quite a few bits of equipment laid out. What I'm gonna do is pop you down and then I'm gonna take you through how to do it. Okay, so let's start with our Tetra pack. So just a normal, a juice carton tetra pack um, as long as it's shiny on the inside make sure that it's clean it's dried and that you've cut it open you also need just a pencil um, a craft knife or a scalpel if you've got one an etching um, point but that's not an etching needle but that's not really necessary and then for the inking it's quite messy so i tend to use gloves the only specialist equipment I would say you really need for this is the inks. So acrylics or watercolours don't work. You do need proper either intaglio printing ink or you can also use what's called block printing ink or sometimes called lino cut ink. You need a toothbrush. That's the best thing I've found to apply the ink to the plates that we're going to be making. And then you'll also need your paper. I would suggest using 300 grams GSM or higher for these, so nice thick cartridge paper, because what we do, we put it into water. I've got here, you can probably just see at the side of your screen, um, an, a lasagna dish actually, with just enough water filled so that I can put, put my paper in just to cover the paper. So that's the paper. You'll then need some old rag or scrim. I've always got some old tea towels hanging around for my printmaking. You'll need just some kitchen towel and also a cotton bud's quite useful as well. So I think that's, oh yes, and as I said, not printing press, we're going to be using the back of a metal spoon. This one's a tablespoon, quite a nice size to use. So I think that's everything. So I'm just gonna clear these to one side and we can get going. While I'm doing that, I will just lay that down there um, so you can see what our plate looks like and what the end result's going to look like. But bear with me two minutes while I just clear the space. Okay, so the first thing to do once you've opened your carton, dried it, cleaned it and dried it, is to pick the part that you'd like to do your print on. So remember, you want to make it smaller than the piece of paper that you'll be using. You'll notice that they'll have fold lines and there might be some scrunching from sort of when you've, when you've washed it and opened it up. So just remember that any lines that are already there will come across on your print. So either make sure you don't use that bit or embrace it and make it part of your design. 
I'm not going to embrace that today. I'm just going to show you um, in this small part here so that you can get a real idea of how this printmaking process works. So you start by drawing your design. And I'm going to stick to my, just make sure I don't make it any bigger than my paper. So quite softly, just draw into the Tetra pack. I'm just going to do a stylized palm design. And I'm showing you this one because it's got some nice highlights so you can see how the paper underneath this plastic, underneath the foil, picks up the ink and gives you some really dark areas. So that's my design drawn. I'm not sure if you can, can just see that there if I move it in the light. Um, but I can, I can see it enough to be able to um, mark into it. And then I take my craft knife, or if you're using a scalpel, I'm going to put the safety catch on. And I want to score rather than cut right the way through. So the marks that I've just made. Just scoring. And then I've got this one in the middle. And I need to think about where I want my ink to go. So I'm using this as um, an example. So I want my ink to be in the main part of the leaves and then this bit here to be left light. So what I need to remember is where I take the foil away, that's where the recess happens and where that ink can go. And to do this, I just make sure that my points meet and then just very carefully take your time use your knife to lift up that point and then when you can grab hold of it just need to make sure i've made enough of a point there going over that again because as I pull this part of the foil I don't want that one to go I'm going to hold that down give it a little helping hand and then take that away and then we've made our first recess and you'll notice that this is like paper this is like the cardboard that's in the middle of the two um, plastic foils and this because it's absorbent takes the ink so as long as you can remember that where you where you where you cut out or where you mark, that's where the ink will go. Then you're onto onto a winner. So I'm just going to carry on cutting these shapes out, working on the same basis. Use the tip of the blade. and then pulling off the foil. Just make sure it doesn't rip there.
I'm just going to add one here because I think that space needs needs another leaf. So if you've just joined us, we are making what's called an Intaglio print. That's a group of prints that uses the recesses on a plate, a printing plate, in this case a Tetra Pak, the inside of a Tetra Pak. As you can see, it's just an orange juice carton. It uses the recesses that we're making here to take the ink and then make your prints. And you can print these a number of times. After a while, the plate will start to break down. But I would say you probably get a good sort of 15 to 20 off of these. They're great for cards. If you've got lots of cards you want to print. The one thing I would remind you of at this point is if you're writing on the cards, then make sure that the writing is in reverse. And make sure the writing is backwards so then when it prints it will come out the right way around so we're just on our final leaf i haven't been very careful there look i've taken some of that off um but make sure you're a bit more careful than me Still going. <laughs> there we go. And then with the stem, I don't want to take that out completely because I want this to be the main part of my image. So I'm just going to use an etching needle just to scratch into the surface. If you don't have an etching needle, then just use the tip of the blade. And you're looking just to scratch into the surface and revealing some of that brown paper underneath. So at this point as well, you might like to add some detail around the side or in the middle. So I'll just show you, you can scratch into the middle of the leaf. So we'll have different tones here. I'm printing in black, so the, the main part of the leaf will be black. Around here will be white, and then this will be kind of a mid-tone as well. So you really can exper experiment with light and shade with this printmaking technique. So just give those leaves a little bit of texture. And now I just want to cut this out so that it's smaller than my paper and I'll show you how to ink up. There, so that's the perfect size for a card. And remember, if you're writing on the card, then make sure that that's in reverse. So I'm just going to grab a, a printing plate, just a piece of acrylic. Because this can get a little bit messy. So I'm going to start by putting my gloves on. You don't have to use gloves, but 
I prefer to. Roll my sleeves up as well. This is ink. I'm very messy anyway. And the, this ink does tend to get everywhere. Okay, so that's a plate. And while I'm doing this, I it normally takes about the same time it takes me to ink up. It's about the, time, it's the same time it takes for the piece of paper uh, to soak in the water. So I've got a lasagna dish here. You can use sort of any container really that's going to take your paper and is deep enough to, and then the water is deep enough to be able to submerge your paper. Make sure it's completely submerged. I'm going to put that to the side while I ink up. So to ink up, I'm going to use uh, my ink and also a toothbrush. And I've got my plate here, my acrylic plate here. So you want to work into your Tetra pack, making sure that you really dab not too heavily because you don't want to, to ruin it, it's fairly fragile but just really work as much as you can into those brown parts where we revealed the cardboard might just use a little bit more ink I'm happy that's all worked into and then I'm just going to do the same on the outside I don't need to work in quite so hard because it takes it very easily because it's a smooth surface oh well, don't forget the stem And you'll see why I suggest wearing gloves. There we are, that's one side. Then I use my rag. I'm using a tea towel rag, scrim, and then we're going to just start holding the print, holding the plate down. Just going to start removing that ink. Actually, what I sometimes do to take the first the first layer off is actually just to cut a piece of Tetra pack and then just use it to glide some of that off, just to scrape some of that off. It. then you can go in with your with your rag and then remove what's left so this takes a little bit of time a little bit of patience just doing it nice and gently being careful not to um, move any of those delicate bits still getting nice and messy Move it to the side and then just going to start now the main parts off I'm just going to start working in in circular motions with the rag really really polishing up the sides so you'll see that there's still a little bit left on there and that's what I want 
because I want the background to have a grey colour, the main part of the leaves to be black and then I'm going to go in with a cotton bud and try to reveal quite a bit of the, the leaf interior. So just keep using a clean bit of rag each time. And I'm going to start holding it with a piece of tissue as well so that I don't leave fingerprints because they will appear on our print. those last parts off and then if I can find it here it is I'm just going to go in with the cotton bud and just really shine those bits up So hopefully that should really stand out in my print. Just being careful not to add any more fingerprints. It's now time to take our paper out of the water and print. So I'm just going to remove my gloves. Move this to one side. using a clean rag take my paper out the water and then you just want to blot it so that it's damp rather than glistening with water Then we lay the paper on top and the damp paper is going to draw out all the ink that's on the surface and in those recesses and I'm just going to use a spoon, the back of just a tablespoon instead of a press. just in a circular motion making sure that you make contact with the paper and a tetra pack plate and you can start seeing all that ink coming through you can see where those marks have been made where the ink's darker in some areas than other others be quite methodical about it because you don't want to miss any parts of your plate so I'm just going to quickly go over once more
making sure that the water's drawing up all the ink in those black recesses. Just have a little look, see if I need to do any more. So there we go, and then we can reveal our print. So we get some lovely mid-tones here, some bright flashes of white where we totally took the ink away here. And I quite like leaving a little frame as well and then the dark here. And then as I said, that can be used um, multiple times, maybe sort of 15, 20 times the same plate. Just ink it up exactly the same way while you're inking it. Make sure that you're um, wetting your paper and then yeah, you can just print to your heart's content. So it's over to you. Um, go into your recycling in bags and boxes. Get out those Tetra packs that you've that you've thrown away. Look through your fridges, and then hopefully you'll be able to come up with some really great prints that you can print onto cards, that you can print onto paper to card, and also to frame. So thank you so much for joining me. As always, we love seeing all of your photos. So if you're making any prints today or over the next week, please pop your photos in the comments. Um, if you tag Virtual Village Hall and also at I Printed That, I'll be able to see them too. Thanks so much for joining me and I look forward to another print making session with you next time. See you soon. Bye.